So we're talking about kids learning. Um, don't you want to hear a specific lesson? Like, what, what are they learning about? How do they learn? Well, this is Swedenborg describing a lesson that he saw children learn, and as with everything in the spiritual world, you can sort of describe it, but you sort of can't, and you'll see him kind of struggling to get a few things across here. This is from Secrets of Heaven 2299. The principal way of teaching children is through representative scenes suited to their frame of mind. No one could ever believe how beautiful and how full of inner wisdom these scenes are. Bit by bit, they fix in the children an intelligence that takes its soul from goodness. Let me report here just a single portrayal that I was permitted to see, from which the reader may draw conclusions about the others. The children portrayed the Lord rising up from the tomb, and along with it, the uniting of his humanity with his divinity. The scene was performed with a wisdom surpassing all human wisdom, and at the same time with childlike innocence. They also presented the image of a tomb. They did not present an image of the Lord along with it, except for one that was so abstract it could hardly be seen as the Lord, except at a distance, so to speak. The reason was that the image of a tomb brings with it something macabre that they could push to the side in this way. Later, very cautiously, they allowed into the tomb a thin, vapory-looking atmosphere, by which they symbolized, again at a fitting distance, the spiritual life present in baptism. Afterward, I saw them represent the Lord going down to the prisoners and taking them up to heaven, a scene they produced with incomparable skill and reverence. Like the children that they were, when they represented the Lord among the prisoners in the underground realm, they let down tiny, soft, very delicate little threads, almost invisible, with which they helped lift the Lord as he rose. All the time they felt a holy fear, not wanting any part of their portrayal to border on what was not spiritual and heavenly. They live among other types of representation too, which lead them into a knowledge of truth and a desire for goodness, just as child's play does when it is suited to their temperament. So very immersive. They're participating in some sort of pageant. They're learning, but they're also part of it, and it's teaching them things. But it's like it's it make sure that it doesn't introduce anything that wouldn't that would be disturbing to them in some way. Very interesting uh, the description that Swedenborg has. And I want to bring in something else here that that is a another experience that reflects that. And so this is one connected to me personally as a person. Uh, so when I was younger, I had a sister that died. And actually, my aunt went through this. She, she had begun meditating and, and uh, w- you know, was shaken up, obviously, by the death of her niece and went into meditation one day and had this connection with her. And then from there, reported having these experiences of seeing her in the afterlife and seeing throughout the years different things she was doing. And one of these descriptions of an activity is very similar to, it's it's not the same thing Swedenborg describes, but it's with a different story from the word, and, but a similar kind of thing happening. So I'll let her describe what that was like. When I came upon Annika and she seemed to be dressed in shepherd's clothing, and she was excited and she went over to, it was twilight and she went over to a campfire and she met with some other children who were dressed the same way. And then I became aware of, okay, just where are we? And I could hear little um, jingling bells, little jingling bells that were hanging around their necks and like stirring. And then the general excitement of the kids and something was going on, I didn't know what, but they were really excited. And then I began hearing, it's, it's gonna happen, it's, it's coming, it's coming. And then um, the skies just like <laughs> lit up with all these angels. And um, the kids were really excited. It was, there was no fear involved, just, just like joy and excitement. And um, it was the heavenly host. And I was like, oh, I was cluing into the fact that, oh, this is like the kids having an experience, like they're the shepherds in the nativity story. So um, so they were all looking up and the angels were singing something that related the idea, God is one. Got up and um, they you know, took the sheep in 
along with them. So it was this great mil milieu of sheep and bleeding and little jingly bells and kids' voices and laughter and stuff. And they began a little journey where they went down um, into valleys and up into hills and made their way to this city. And there was a star and they were following the little star, bringing the kids along. And then they came to the outskirts of what only could be Bethlehem. And there was a manger and um, the kids were allowed to go in like in, in twos and threes and so on, sift into um, the, to see this holy scene with um, very intimate with Mary and Joseph. And you could smell the, the smell of the hay and you were aware of like the cattle and such moving a little bit. And, and um, so that was really cool. And then um, it seemed like from there, she was just sort of automatically transported to her bedroom, her bed, when she was about to go to bed. And her angel mom and dad asked her, so what did you learn? What did you so it's always this learning. Everything is there, it's fun, but you're learning because you've got to learn to grow. So like in all these accounts, learning plays this central role. Okay, so this is what she learned from that experience. That... Um, the Lord's truth, the star means that the Lord's truth is shining in heaven and on earth. So that was the big, that was a way they had this wonderful experience. And I, in various meditations with her and connections with her, I have seen her um, creating things in an art center and interacting with nature and animals, and tree climbing and fruit gathering, a lot of dances, dances that represent things. And that's something that she has a love for. Um, singing and watching entertaining plays that they get a lot of meaning out of and uh, puppet shows. And, and also I've seen them interacting with babies and like trying that on and then um, also comforting people on earth um, and uh, reading from the word and um, and getting a deeper meaning from it when they read it um, having it almost intuitively enter them and also intend attending events like weddings and things like that so playing that to give you guys a sense of this is another account of what it's like. And it was cool for me getting to hear from her, you know, this is this is what she's up to. This is what she's doing. So that was, you know, this, this is part of my interest in the whole thing. 